One, two. Okay, so to begin with, you've got a typical bluesy slide lick. You've got your second finger on the B string on the third fret. You've got to quickly pick that note and then slide up two frets to five. So this is called like a ghost note or an acciacatura. You've got to slide as quick as possible up two frets. Now, to make this sound even more authentic and bluesy, when you play that first third fret, Make sure that your second finger is not touching the E string and muting it like that because you need to try and strike both strings so that both B and E ring together as you slide. So my E string still ringing there. If you lay your finger over as you slide, it's going to stop and you're not going to get the big oops, bluesy sound like that. Once you slid back up, um, jump back down to your 3rd fret and pick again. You can keep your finger on the string, but what you shouldn't get is like a slide back down. If that's happening, it means that you're not jumping back to the 3rd fret fast enough. See, that's fast enough. This isn't. Okay, so if you want to play it authentic like the song, you need to jump down quickly. Your next part is a pull-off on your 2nd fret G with your index finger, your first finger. Now, on the G and B string, sorry, G and D string, you can pull the string off downwards like this, watch closely. Or you can sort of flick it upwards. But one thing which really is important with this pull-off technique is that you need to slightly bend the string. This isn't a lesson on just pull-offs, so here's a quick recap on that. A very quick recap, you've got to pick the string, put your finger right up to the edge of the fret, have your thumb hooked around the top, and with your first finger still anchored underneath the neck like that, pull the string down a little bit, just until you start to hear it bend, and then bring your finger away from the string. This is, this is pulling the string downwards, this is pushing it upwards. I prefer to pull it downwards because you don't seem to need as much support from your hand on the neck. One thing which is really important is you don't pull the string too much, it shouldn't sound like this. Okay? Just pull the string a little bit, it's like you're just twanging it with your finger really. And also be really really careful that you don't pull your finger straight down because as you just heard then, all you're going to do is knock the adjacent strings, like that. Doesn't sound great. Pull it down, and then away from the fretboard, like that. You see, it's really just coming out that way, not straight down. So you do your pull off, and just finish on the second fret D after that. Okay, and then at this point, you put in your E major chord on. And you're just doing two strums on that chord. Make sure that your second strum is a little bit louder. A way to make that really easy is just hit a couple of the strings the first time 
and then hit all of your strings. Now here's your next part, starting from there. So this part sounds tricky, but it's actually really similar to the E major chord you're playing already. If you watch my fingers there, this is the E chord. Take the second and third fingers on the A and D strings, move them up to the fifth fret, don't take them off the strings, watch, and hit the A and D strings. Pick those two strings, keep those there, and here's a like, slightly tricky rhythm you've got to play, starting from the fifth fret. So all I'm doing there is hitting the pair of notes, then the bottom string, E, then the pair again. Just three different notes. One, two, three. Then what you need to do is shift down one fret, so your both fingers are on four now, and play the bottom string again, and the pair of notes. So this is how it sounds from the fifth fret. And with the E chord at the start, E, can let all of those notes ring, let them all ring together. And then what happens next is you go back down to E, do two strums just like you did before. And then the very last part is this really typical Hendrix Hadrio hey lick, which lots of people recognize. So what's happening here is we're using a hammer on, on the A string open, and then hammering your second finger onto your second fret. What happens after that is you hit your D string open, so there's three notes, open, two, D open. Now you've got to play six notes without any gaps in between, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. The most important part of repeating a hammer on or a pull off is that you don't rush for hammer ons because what, well, ev what everyone will do to begin with is this. It's the same as if you had pull offs, people would probably go. Because you want, you need to um, put your finger down hard on the string, not quickly. It needs to be a sudden movement, but it's more about how how you slam the finger down, you need to actually hammer it on the string. If I cover up my strings so they don't ring, this is how hard you need to hit the string, you should be able to hear it. Test it by, put, put your finger on a table, you should be able to tap it quite loud like that. What you'll do to begin with is you'll, is you'll probably go, and you won't get much sound at all out of the string. So a good way to help you get this sounding strong is make sure your thumb's on the back, do not take your thumb off because that's actually clamping your finger against the string. Make sure that you put your finger right up against the edge of the fret, not in the middle of the fret. The further, the further away you get from the second fret, which is the second bar along there, the harder it is to make the string actually hit the string. And also, try and make sure that you've not got your thumb wrapped around the neck too much. You fit, your finger needs to act a little bit like a whip so you're actually using all of your, the length of the finger to hit the string down. Okay, so make sure that you play six notes, all the same speed. And for the third and sixth notes, you're playing your D string. Now you can pick all of these notes down, apart from the hammer on notes. Pick, 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 pick. Watch my right hand. And then you finish finishing on the second fret again. And you can let all those notes overlap as well. Like that. Okay, now the main part of the song, um, Jimi Hendrix, whenever he plays any song, he's pretty much changing it every single time he plays it. Um, a lot of people know him for doing crazy guitar solos and playing guitar, well, pretending to play guitar with his teeth and stuff. But he's actually an amazing uh, rhythm guitar player, amazing chord player. 
Um, the way which I'm going to show you how to play this song, the way I played it at the start, is playing arpeggios. So we're using five chords, C, G, D, A and E, and we're playing the exact same arpeggio pattern on each chord. So if you don't know what an arpeggio is, it's when you play a chord one note at a time. The arpeggio pattern goes like this, you start on a C chord, now you need to play the lowest note of each chord first. So C chord, the lowest note is on your A string. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the A string, then the string below, which is D, so A, D. And then you're going to strum just the rest of the strings in the chord. Like that, so it's like a pattern of three different things. Pick, pick, strum. Next chord is G. So again, you're starting on your lowest string in the chord, not the lowest string. If you do, if you play the lowest string every time, it's just going to sound like E all the way through it. And that's not right, it's the lowest string in the chord. So G. Now your next one is D. So you see a hit me, D string. Then A. And then E. Now, when you're playing arpeggios, you need to be using chords which are really easy for you to switch between with your left hand. So if you're not comfortable with all of these chord changes, C to G, G to D, then you really need to try a song which has just got a dead simple strumming pattern in. You could even just go, do two strums on each chord. That's a good idea if you're finding it hard to play any of these chord changes. So, Concentrate on the bottom note of each chord. When you're actually practicing it as well, really try not to look at your left hand. Don't look at your fretting hand, look at your picking hand. And make sure that you're getting the lowest string in time. Try not to hesitate. You see, I hit, I hit a wrong string there, but you might not have noticed if I hadn't said anything. If you miss a couple of strings like this, was a bit bad at the end but if you keep that pattern going it's going to sound okay so anyway once you get to your E chord E listen we're just playing a little bluesy fill again so for this one put your second finger on your A string on the second fret pick it down keep it there these notes can overlap again then pick up on the D string now you play those two notes twice. Like that. Listen. Down, up, down, up. With the E chord in front of it, it goes rest. Then do your E pattern twice again. Now, if you're finding it hard to hear this in the song, that's um, for a good reason, because Hendrix doesn't really play this all the way through the track. If you listen closely, you will be able to hear this pattern. What he's doing is he's playing the same sort of chords. But he's improvising the whole of the way through it. So I hope you found this uh, lesson useful. It's a really good track to start off using arpeggios for. Um, if you've done any improvisation with your E minor pentatonic scale, you can also use the E chord at the end to do a little bit of improvising. So when you get to the E chord, G, D, A, E. Use a little bit of time there to improvise every time it goes round. Here we are again, E. And before long, you'll sound exactly like Jimi Hendrix. Well, maybe not, but you'll at least be playing in the same sort of style he does. 
Um, okay, so if you liked this video, please subscribe, comment if you'd like another track done in this sort of style. There's tons of guitarists which uh, play this same sort of arpeggio type of um, playing. There's loads of Chili Peppers songs and tracks by John Mayer which do similar sorts of things. If you'd like to hear any of those, just put a comment in the box and I might get around to doing a video for that. Thanks for watching.